Hello, my awesome and amazing Scorpios. It's Mel with Blue Scorpion Tarot here to bring you another general collective reading. Today's reading is uh, going to be audio recorded. I am currently out of town right now and I am in the hotel and totally forgot to bring my card holder. So this reading is for those of you Scorpios who are born on November 1st. Okay. Happy birthday to you guys. Um, I sincerely hope that... Uh, your day was very special, very magical, and um, had set your intentions for the next new year, we'll say, of your birth year, okay? So anyway, happy birthday to all of you. We're going to go ahead and dive into the energy. Calling upon the trusted ancestors of my Scorpios born on November 1st to bring in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the power of the numbers, and so it is. And of course, rolling the dice to see what I need to shuffle the deck to. Power of number seven. Power of number seven again. And power of number 11. Okay, so seven and seven is 14 plus the one that's 15. And it looks like we are going to the number 25. Number 25. So... Some of you Scorpios born on November 1st, you could be dealing with a Cancerian or a Leo born in the month of July. You could also be dealing with another Scorpio or possibly a Sagittarius born in the month of November. You could also be dealing with a Taurus or a Gemini born in the month of May, possibly an Aquarius or a Pisces born in the month of February. You could also be dealing with a Capricorn or an Aquarius born in the month of January. However, seeing the number 12 out of the combination of numbers, you could also be dealing straight up with a Pisces because um, the hanged man card could make its presence known. However, with the number 12, you could also be dealing with a Sagittarius or a Capricorn born in the month of December. <clears throat> Strong uh, Capricorn energy coming in through the number 15, which would be the devil card. I can also see the number 21. You could also be dealing with a fixed sign, an Aquarius, a Taurus, a Leo, and or, again, possibly another Scorpio. Power of number 17, I'm also seeing in the combination of numbers. Again, strong Aquarius energy that could represent the star card. Okay. We could see uh, the justice card kick in. So some of you could be dealing with our astrological next door neighbor, Libra. Some of you were born in 1951, 1952, or 1957 for my more mature audience. You could have been born in 1971, 1972, or possibly 1975 or 1977 for some of you. You could be 21, 25 possibly 27 years of age. You could also be 51, 52, or possibly even 57 years old for my more mature audience. But going to the power of number 25 for the beautiful star sign of Scorpio for those of you born on November 1st. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, and 25. Trusted ancestors of my Scorpios born on November 1st. What is the overall general collective energy, please? Show me what's up. The four of coins. Some of you guys could be dealing with an earth sign, a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Somebody is withholding, either withholding information. They could be selfish, needy, greedy, codependent, uh, holding back emotions. Um, they can even Somebody could even be holding back money. Somebody could be holding money back from you, or it could be right now for some of you Scorpios born on the 1st of November that right now you could be holding on tight to your money 
there could be various reasons for that happening in this moment for some of you. It could be due to the fact of the holidays coming up. Maybe you're trying to reserve your money so that you can buy holiday gifts, you know, for friends, family members. That's one thing. Or you you are saving up money uh, possibly to start a business, okay? So maybe you're trying to be a little bit more frugal. Um, there could be a hold on a bank account right now for some of you. But we'll see what the Four of Pentacles is bringing in. Okay, the Empress. You guys are coming in as the Empress, male or female, doesn't matter. You could also be dealing with a Pisces or an Aries born in the month of March. You could also be dealing with a Taurus or a Libra because those two zodiac signs come through the Empress traditionally. Something about a new outlook in life or you're ready to emerge or grow and or expand. Um, right now, maybe some of you female Scorpios could be holding off on having another pregnancy uh, because the Empress can represent a mother or a mother figure. There could also be family dynamics going on where there is a mother figure that is withholding from you, holding back her love, holding back her affection. Uh, maybe you're holding back your love or affection for a mother figure. For some of you, maybe due to the fact that this um, mother figure for some of you um, could be highly toxic, maybe narcissistic, um, could have been an abusive mother. So, and or on a business level, um, again, holding back, reserving your money so that you can kind of dive deep into your real passions, your dreams, your goals right now. And there could be a little sense of impatientness that's going on, or you're looking ahead to the future, maybe to work for another company, or you're holding off, maybe taking a leap of faith, whether it's into entrepreneurship or holding back because you're trying to find another company possibly to work for uh, that's going to show you or give you uh, more of a level of respect. However, on a romantic level, I'm also feeling that somebody is holding back from you and they could be watching you from a distance and seeing your growth uh, as an individual or you never know, they could be, you know, finding out things through the grapevine from people, you know, friends, family members, a social circle, etc. We're going to see what the Empress is bringing in. Okay, five of wands. Could be dealing with a fire sign, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. There's conflict. I feel like there's a family dynamic that's going on or somebody is conflicted about reaching out to you, so they're withholding. But yet, despite any environmental quote-unquote chaos that could be going on in this moment, Scorpio, um, they're showing me your higher self is really trying to you know, stay tried and true to your code and not back down from what it is that you want or need. Um, but I do feel that somebody here is being disrespectful towards you or has disrespected the connection. Or again, I can even say maybe even, you know, taking somebody for granted here. I'm going to go into the Kipper deck. And right now you could also be trying to avoid uh, family conflicts or arguments or chaos right now, or even with a potential lover or suitor. It could be that you're trying to, what I always say is rise above the noise and not get distracted or not have your emotions overwhelm you or take you over right now, Scorpio, no matter what you feel you were faced or challenged with, but going into the Kipper deck. There's a false person, false person card, card number eight came up, um, I'm picking up on a mother-in-law, but I'm also picking up on a potential suitor that has exuded false intentions. Like they're not, this person Scorpio is not on your level or these friends or family members are not on your level. They never have been. And with this Empress energy, male or female, doesn't matter. Like I said, what I'm hearing from spirit is like you were chosen, 
you are chosen out of your friends, your family members to the way I feel is outshine them all. And these people or friends or potential lover could be at war with themselves or at war among other family members. Uh, some of these family members could have called you selfish or like you're false, let you lie or, you know, just stupid ish such as that. Okay. I feel that this potential suitor, friend, family member could be mother figure, father figure, siblings, whatever. They don't know the real you. They really don't know who you are. And a lot of you, it's taken years to figure out who you are as an individual. Trying to figure out <clears throat> what self-love is really truly all about. You could have felt ignored, rejected by your friends, your family members. You could have felt like you were the oddball out while going to school. You weren't exactly a jock, a cheerleader, a nerd. You were just kind of like a loner. I'm picking up like loner energy growing up for some of you. But as this empress is in the middle of somebody withholding and this conflict of the five of wands it's like you can see beyond or see right through the bullshit of somebody in their antics and I do feel that your intuition has been pulsating you for a very long time and there could have been moments in time as well where you have denied or ignored your intuition but there's a false person there's somebody here who's jealous or they're hiding behind a false mask. There could have been in a romantic situation, some love bombing that was going on. And, you know, yeah. what can I say? You know, maybe some of you fell for this person, really fell hardcore for this person. But somebody's intentions were not honorable. And in truth, the way I see it, they didn't know who they were messing with. You have a lot of trusted ancestors on the other side, Scorpio, that really have got your back. And I do feel that these trusted ancestors are trying to protect you from these negative people or outside influences. In a job situation, I'm also feeling that your coworkers and possibly a manager or a boss figure, somebody who's at the hierarchy, have also underestimated you. Um, they don't listen to you. You know, you give really great ideas and suggestions, but it's like your ideas and suggestions never, like, they don't adapt to these awesome ideas that you have and maybe in order to grow the company or trying to look at something from a new perspective. I do feel that there are people in your work environment that are exceptionally highly toxic, but yet at the same time, they are also jealous. They are also jealous of either your looks, your intelligence, the way you handle yourself. Really be careful who you, you know, from this point forward in a work environment situation, be very careful who you are opening up to. You know, a lot of times when we walk into a company or the company that we work for, okay, it's so easy to want to just take our problems, the things that are bothering us, and try to divulge with other people at work because we're looking for the that's just how the brain works sometimes we're we're looking for a way out to be able to vent release what we're feeling hoping that somebody in the work environment will um understand where we're coming from but in truth these people that you work with they have a lot of chaos or toxic drama in their life and so Really be conscientious. Are these people in truth that you even work with that you could open up from time to time? Do they really have a healthy environment themselves? Are they going through problems with their kids? Are they going, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't listen or be emotionally supportive, but it's so amazing how people could just take what you say and totally twist or turn something around, okay? 
So be very careful who you open up to, and it could also feel at times too, Scorpio, in a work environment situation or a company, maybe in a company meeting, that it's very difficult to open up and express because maybe you're worried that expressing the truth is going to upset the apple cart. Well, if that's the case, then that's not the type of company you want to work for. Because with this Empress energy, whether you're a masculine Scorpio or a feminine Scorpio, you're meant to be in business for yourself. And you have enough intelligence to run your own company. Run it to the best of your abilities and be able to thrive. Because it just feels like in a work environment situation, like something here is not getting resolved or there are people that are jealous of you could also be talking behind your back, but it could also be the same in a family dynamic. But there is, I will clarify this false person because somebody's intentions here, <clears throat> they're not honorable. Going back into the Kipper deck. Now, see, spirit, thank you. Thank you, trusted ancestors. Trusted ancestors are clarifying the Empress energy with the pathway card, card number 35. No, see, Scorpio, if you have been doubting yourself whether or not you're on the right path, no, you actually are. But I do feel that there's some kind of adjustment or situation that needs to change for your personal growth because you're meant to be and are in this emperor type of empress energy. But I can also look at the five of wands as a blockage. Like somebody is trying to either block your success, block your growth, etc. So it's like this five of wands activity has to poof, it has to get eliminated. Like something has to get banished or you need to remove yourself in due time from a toxic situation or connection or relationship. And it just feels like you are turning your back, especially in a romantic situation. The Empress is looking away from this false person. There could also be a same sex relationship going on. So girl and girl or boy and boy, etc. Okay. Um, something here about knowing your value and your worth. And a lot of you have been dealing with narcissistic um, people. I just heard spirit say, knock you down to the ground, I'm wanting to knock you down to the ground. No, see, the path of least resistance is when we are working in correlation with our trusted ancestors. You don't need to know your trusted ancestors, their entire names or what time frame that they live in. However, I do encourage doing a family tree, understanding your family lineage, where you come from. I think it is vitally important because you will find out more aspects of yourself. I do genealogy personally, and I have been blown away with who I'm related to and where I come from and who my great great, 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 great grandparents are. I mean, I can get one of my family <clears throat> tree lines. I can get back to my 22nd great grandfather that goes all the way back to the eighth century. So here's the thing. When we work in conjunction with our trusted ancestors and we put full faith because they are, their energy is on the other side. Okay. So they can foresee a lot of things farther, farther down the road. Okay. Okay. I have my own personal relationship with my trusted ancestors on the other side, and they're the ones that really make, in truth, my life easier because I believe in what they want for me, not to say that they have control over me, but I know that they only want the best for me. And so um, staying on this path of least resistance, in the, um, the pathway card, there's an image of butterflies. And the butterflies are all about transformation. You're ready to go through a metamorphosis, a Scorpio, and to release and let go of all of these toxic people, people who don't really have any true empathy. That's what I just heard from spirit. It came out of my mouth. They really don't. And I get it. We get busy in life and, you know, 
we get consumed with a lot of irons in the fire, you know, and then sometimes we wonder why, you know, people are not reaching out or, you know, and then maybe you feel bad from time to time because you're not reaching out to other people. But, you know, in truth, there are people that really just don't give a damn about you. And it's even hard. That is very heavy for me to say because I go through that and I know who cares about me. And I think a lot of you are awakened to the truth, like who in your family really believe in you, who of your social circle really believes in you. You can feel it when somebody is talking behind your back or saying negative things about you, you know, and these people could be making you question, making you question who you are as a person and your integrity and your loyalty and your worth and all of this. You know what that does? In truth, that creates more trauma to the subconscious mind. And we've all been through it. A lot of us are still going through it. The trauma. Trying to understand who we are as individuals, what our purpose is, what the divine wants for us, what purpose do we need to serve for the divine. Our innate gifts within us is what is supposed to come to the surface. And a lot of you can take your natural born talents and gifts and turn it, you know, into a money-making business. But there is somebody who's false or does not have your back or they're a frenemy. Somebody here is a frenemy. And it's like, I always hear that song in my head, they smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. The backstabbers. Backstabbers. Yeah, backstabbers. You have them in your family, for some of you. And you have them in a social circle. Mutual friends, acquaintances. Job situation. Spirit wants you to look up. Look up up and also look outwards look forward to your future because again it is about tuning out the noise going back into the kipper deck clarifying the five of wands the lover's card there could be competition you could feel like you were in competition with somebody that you're very much in love with that put you into a third party situation or you could have been the third party and didn't know you were the third party. Mm, ouch, right? Yeah. But I look at this false person as a karmic. So there is a lover's, I feel like spirit saying, avoid the lover's quarrel. I do feel like spirit is trying to protect you from falsified people. That really, in truth, never really had your back. It's such a, it's such a sad state of affairs that people can really be this way. And, and it's so funny because these narcissistic people may think that you're narcissistic, and then that's, that's not the case. They don't have the willpower to thrive they don't, they don't have your intelligence, Scorpio. They don't have your charisma. They don't have any of it. And they may think that everything has just fallen right into your lap. Like, why are you so chosen? Why do you always get the lucky breaks, etc.? And a lot of you may think, well, Mel, I don't really get a lot of lucky breaks. I keep going through heartbreak and split ups and separation and been through divorce. And, you know, but in truth... <laughs> Yeah, sure, you've been through hell and back. But these people don't have what it takes to thrive. They don't know how to pretty much pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and start all over again. You have outdone yourself in many particular ways where through, maybe for some of you, through your silence, have rose to the top or you're rising to the top currently in this moment in small increments, okay, where you're pretty much could be shutting some people up because even the four of pentacles that I have in front of me next to this empress, 
you may be shutting people up with your silence through your proactiveness because that's what the emperor and the empress does. They take action. In tarot terms, the emperor and empress are all about action and being diplomatic and pretty much not giving a damn what anybody thinks. Have you really stopped and looked at yourself in the mirror, Scorpio, to realize everything that you have accomplished? Because if you haven't, I, reckon, I, I recommend that you do. So somebody here I feel wants to get out of conflict with you because of this lover's card clarifying the five of wands. Could be dealing with a Gemini or a Cancerian born in the month of June. Picking up on strong Capricorn energy, seeing that through the number 15. Picking up on Leo and Virgo energy through the um, through the number 35. But also, you could be dealing with Pisces, Aries. I've got Taurus and Gemini energy coming in through the 3 and the 5 that create the number 35. Somebody had false intentions towards you. And somebody now wants to kiss and make up, but I'm hearing the phrase from Star Wars, it's a trap. Mm. Listen, Scorpio, you may love this person on a romantic level with all of your heart and soul. There could be more curiosity that's going on because maybe a lot of time has passed since you've really technically have talked to this person. But I just can't help but get past that somebody here has got false intentions. And you need to stay in this empress slash emperor mode and do not get distracted. Because you know what's interesting? is that, and I've been saying this in some of the general collective readings, is that, you know, the holidays to me are now like a Mercury retrograde because people get very much like mixed feelings and emotions during a Mercury retrograde, okay, where everything feels like it's going backwards or it's just too much confusion and chaos and People come out of the woodwork. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, the holidays, <clears throat> to me, <clears throat> as I have come more into my spiritual awareness, that the holidays are a false illusion to some extent. People who have their religious beliefs, their spiritual beliefs, they're entitled to that because that's what their brain has been programmed to believe, okay? Because people don't do their research, and I'm not going to go off on a tangent about the history of the holidays and where it really truly stems from. But the bottom line is this energy that we experience in the third quarter of the Zodiac year, which would be Libra, Scorpio, and Sag. Okay. Cause when you think about it, you know, what are some of the major holidays we've got, you know, um, Halloween, Thanksgiving, then you've got, you know, um, Hanukkah and you got Christmas and New Year's Eve. Okay. So we go, we go through the third quarter, getting in the mood, trying to find our way to get in the mood. And, and, you know, people use this time frame to open up, to test the waters, whether or not they have access to you, especially if you've been in no contact with a specific person or friends or family members. And then of course, traditionally speaking, Christmas is in the season of Capricorn. Okay. So it's on that, just a few days after that cusp line of Sag into Capricorn season, you know, so then we go into the winter solstice where everything kind of, you know, becomes dormant. So I feel like what Spirit's saying here with these six cards in front of me is that it, it, it's time to stay in your power. And once you make af affirmative decisions within yourself that you're going to stop settling for less than you know what you deserve, you're going to stop 
entertaining anything that goes against the grain of what your body is telling you your intuition also works through your body feeling how do certain people make you feel how did this last lover or potential suitor or the boyfriend or the girlfriend make you feel do you get tense do you feel open is it like nails on a chalkboard? What is it? That's your body trying to tell you, say, no. To stay on the pathway where there's this transformative energy, you have to listen to what the mind and the body is telling you because if something is going against your grain, you're just, what I see you moving into is conflict. Because I can also look at this as a forewarning that somebody here that you could have been in love with or still might be in love with, maybe trying to come in to create more conflict in your life when spirit and your trusted ancestors are, are definitely trying to be the, the shining light here to help you to stay focused on your future and your life's purpose. Because I do feel that you got some frenemies. You got some frenemies and enemies in your family, people who don't really truly love you. Because I really don't have an over-the-top emotional, I don't even have a cup card in front of me. Sure, I got the lover's card, but the lover's energy is very fickle. Sometimes the lover's energy can talk about choices in love. Somebody put you into conflict or made you competition or put you in some form of competition. That, that's a narcissistic tactic, you guys. And there could be family members that are trying to make you question yourself as if you're a bad person or that you're unloving or that you're selfish or greedy or whatever. When in truth, they don't know a damn thing about you. Like I said in the early part of this video, they don't know who you are. You are different. You're very different than your other family members that just are oblivious to the awesomeness of who you are as an individual. I could go on and on, but I'm not. I think you understand where I'm saying this because you know what I'm doing with my hands right now. My, my right hand is taking this five of wands with the lover's card and I started to slowly push it away along with this four of coins and this false person to push it away. It's almost like I'm doing energy work here to push this away from you guys in this position of the emperor or slash empress energy and stay on this pathway. And I'm putting my, literally putting my hands to cover, to block the chaos around you guys because I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to question yourself, to question your mind every day, to question whether or not people truly care about you, people love you, or, you know, thinking like you're, is anybody ever going to be true, real, authentic, be able to be transparent with me, or is everybody out there a liar? I understand that feeling. Listen, you can trust yourself. You are the number one person you have to trust because to trust yourself is to trust God, is to trust the universe, is to trust your trusted ancestors, whatever label you want to put on it. In fact, I'm going to do you guys an energetic favor. I am turning over this five of wands with this lover's card and the four coins with this false person. I don't even know if I want to clarify the false person because if somebody's being false, they're always going to be false. Bottom line, they're not going to change. We need to stop thinking that everybody is going to change. It's not being Debbie Downer or pessimistic. Sometimes we have to look at things for what it is. And then also recognize too, what is of value for you to really manifest? Because it could take you 10 times more energy to try to manifest for somebody to treat you better, to treat you right, versus why not wipe the chalkboard clean and take a whole new look at your life and where you want it to go, Scorpio. And X out these people who really just don't give a shit. 
You know who you are. <clears throat> you know yourself better than anybody. And these people and these past lovers, I'm sorry, but they missed the boat. And it's almost like they can just go ahead and get washed away. Because now a lot of you are starting to see the truth. The truth of a lot of people. The truth of your mother, your father, your aunts, your uncles, your siblings, your brother, you know, friends, family members. Like, you know when something's up, Scorpio. You get that gut pull. And from this point forward, from this day forward... From the time you listen to this reading, choose your success right now. Choose your success. Love will come. It will come. A lot of it has to do with your mindset right now because a lot of you, I feel, are still going through a healing phase. And you need to keep developing upon your character, your willpower, your confidence, your courage, and know who you are. And embrace it. These people <clears throat> and some of these family members, they listen, they can't, they can't compare to you at all. Not one iota. My awesome and amazing Scorpio is born on November 1st. Again, I really hope that you had a beautiful birthday that you did something fun, <clears throat> that hopefully you were able to get out of the house, go do something special for your day. If you would like to book a personal reading with me and do it through the power of the numbers, you can hit me up at bluescorpiongifts at gmail.com. And my amazing assistant, Victoria, will book you for that personal reading. But until next time, take care.